Welcome to Toffee TV. It is the Start 11 show. Crystal Palace versus Everton, Selhurst Park, 3 o'clock on the Saturday. Last game before the international break. It's going to be a very, very tough game. This Crystal Palace obviously beaten Burnley last week, 2 0. Return of Eze, very, very good player. Uh, but it is somewhere we've had success over the years. Um, I think it's six wins in the Premier League down there. So. Yeah, be it, it it could end up being one that isn't necessarily for the neutrals. Last season was a nil nil draw where we had Mason Holgate sent off and obviously uh, done well to stick it out and grab a valuable point in our fight to stay in the Premier League. Um, let's hope this one's a little bit more entertaining in our favour, of course. So let's get into it. Jordan Pickford in goal. Say it every week. There's no real competition, is there, at the moment? Jal Virginia did play in the EFL Trophy in the week, and that's good for his development. But certainly at the moment, Jordan Pickford going along great guns uh, as he heads off after this game to play for England as well. At right back, I'm going for Nathan Patterson. Sound like a bit of a broken record now, don't I? I'm going for Nathan Patterson. Uh, I thought Ashley Young actually played well last week. I thought he did well. I just think the manager didn't make the sub when he, he should have, which was to bring Nathan Patterson on for Jack Harrison. Um, and that would help the side out. But I'm going for Nathan Patterson again. That might that might be that might be unfair on Young, but last away game, Patterson against West Ham, I thought he played well after a little bit of a shaky start. I thought he played well. So I'm going for Nathan Patterson at right back. At left back. Michalenko, probably in his best form and as, as an Everton player. Got a couple of uh, big games ahead of him playing for Ukraine coming up as well, but um, scored last weekend and is probably in the best form, defensively doing really well. And we'll need that against against Crystal Palace um, who play with um, you know three players in the attacking positions who can be very dangerous at times. So Important play, growing all the time. I hope that he gets the confidence to start going more forward because obviously he got the goal last week, but certainly in the wide positions, it'd be good to see him getting uh, forward more. But in a great, great spell at the moment, great spell, uh, and hopefully that continues. The two centre-backs are obviously James Tarkowski, who again is in very consistent form. I thought he played really well last week. Looks like a real captain at the moment for Everton. And again, as hopefully that continues. And Jared Brantwaite, who is on four yellow cards. So if he was to pick up a yellow card, then this one would miss the Manchester United game. Um, obviously, talk of him during the week of him have a little knock. But I think he'll be all right. I think he'll play. And after this game, he'll be involved in the under-21s where England would actually be playing at Goodison Park. So that's really big for him as well. So... Again, another game for him. Hopefully, um, hopefully he doesn't pick up a yellow card because I think him and Tarkowski against Manchester United, I'd fancy that as well. So uh, those two go going great guns at the moment as well and, and hopefully we can get away with this game with a clean sheet. Make sure to head over to toffeetvefc.com slash shop for all our latest designs. You can get them in t-shirts, get them in hoodies. You can even get them in mugs. Don't forget if you're a Toffee TV Premier member, you get 25% off your orders. So why not go over, join Toffee TV Premier and buy some mates today. So into midfield, um, possible decision to be made here because of the involvement of Adrissa Garna Gay last week, where I thought he played, I thought he played well. Um, yeah, it's a difficult one, this, because he did play well, but we did miss Onana. We missed him on the ball. We missed his calmness. I think we missed his... Well, we didn't miss his physical presence as much against someone like Brighton, but I think we'd miss his physical presence against someone like Crystal Palace. So I'm bringing Onana back. Listen, if there is any doubt about him at all, I'm sure the manager will will start him on the bench. But I I I think we can we can get him through this game. And I think going into the international break, then it's up to up to Belgium. I think he's suspended for Belgium, isn't he, in the first game? Because obviously the last game it never got played. It obviously got suspended. So I imagine he's still he's still um he's still suspended. So if he isn't, let me know in the comments. So I'm going to start on Onana because I think you need that calmness of him playing playing in front of the back four. 
and the physicality. I don't think we've got another player like that in our squad who can do that. So for hit for me, he returns, and alongside him we have James Garner, who um, has different. Listen, he's got different facets of his game. We'd love him to get him on the ball much uh, more, but. I think in the away games with Onana, he showed, certainly at Brentford, where obviously he was coming off the right, and against Aston Villa, we played in the centre with Onana. Showed different facets of his game, and obviously his tackling is really important. Um, I think he sees danger quite early as well, and obviously when he's on the ball, he's got a good eye for a pass as well, and there's the set piece as well. So for me, James Garner will start alongside Onana in the midfield. Head of them, Abdullah Decore, who's hugely important for the way we play in away games. Being that link between the forward and the midfield, patrolling that area, the physical side of it, being able to break up play at times as well. It's obviously we've seen the goals that he's got in these, these away games as well have been massively important. And they can be huge in these games. You know, we saw saw him get goals at Sheffield United and and, and at um and Brentford as well, which have been you know, been big in the context of the game. So hugely, hugely important in the uh, in that number 10 role, split striker, whatever you want to call it. Uh, big, big for him to be playing. On the right-hand side, Jack Harrison starts. I don't think he's been out at the last two games. I really don't, but I don't think there's anyone else to play there. I think defensively, he does well, although you could argue the Brighton goal came because he didn't get close enough to Matoma. Um I've said this, I'm like a broken record. If the fullback goes past him when he's got the ball, he's going to do a lot more damage. He's He has two men mark, marking him nearly every game because he he's coming inside on that left foot and we don't have a right back that goes past him. That's why I think Patterson's so important. If you have someone goes past him, it creates the half a yard of space for him to either play the ball down the line or come inside. The fullback takes one of those players away and suddenly he's one-on-one -on -one with his marker. That's hugely important. And we don't seem to create that because of the fullback. And I think that's on Sean Dice to, to work on that. I think that takes away from his game. I really, I really do. Because he is someone who likes dribbling with the ball. He's not someone who's going to cross it all the time. He wants to dribble. He wants to uh, get into space. It's so important to have an overlapping player. And again, that's why I have Patterson in the team for my team anyway so um let's hope he is a, there's an improvement there for, from him this week i just think he doesn't make decisions quick enough and that might be because he, he's he's getting two men marking him um so let's see hope there's an improvement on the other side dwight mcneil again just waiting for that first goal from him. hopefully he comes on saturday hopefully he takes his opportunity and gets that goal um Defensively, really important, but obviously we've seen against Burnley, uh, you know, 10 days ago, we saw him in the League Cup on a great ball in for James Tarkowski to score the first goal. More crosses like that. Dom would love more crosses like that, but there doesn't seem to be as many crosses coming in from that area. So more crosses, again, great if Michalenko went on the outside of him, but that's something that is more favourable to Dwight McNeil because he's on he's on his side. He's on, he's on his uh, favoured left foot. I say favoured. His only basic foot that he plays with. Um, but it'd be just nice to see him get a goal, get off the mark. Obviously, he scored a lot of his goals last season in the second half of the season, but it'd be nice to see him get off the mark. I think that's something he's been missing from his all-round game. But listen, the lad works tirely. He doesn't stop for 90 minutes. Does not stop running up and down the pitch. Gives you absolutely everything. Um, and obviously, that's why the manager loves him, and that's why Dan Juma really can't get a look in on that left-hand side at all. So, Dwight McNeil. So, off, and then up front, has to be Dominic Carvalho, who obviously scored um, against these last season at home, scored against these, obviously, the season before at home. We all know about that goal. So, can he do it again? Can Dom get a goal, a big goal against Crystal Palace again for us? Listen, the gap between him and, you know, Beto is, I don't think, I think at first, I don't think a lot of us, so thought it was that big but as he's got back into the team and his sharpness has come and his pace has come and the leap has come back we are seeing the difference between him and Beto Beto is something as a work in progress something that more time on the training pitch and more time coming off the bench we'll see him develop as a player and just get almost like Beto's got better tricks and a better running style 
but he can't get hold of the ball. The basic first stuff of just getting hold of the ball. Dom just either wins every header or puts the defender off. He's hassling, he's harrying those centre backs. He's causing trouble. He's making it hard for them. He's off. He's the first line of defence, and obviously scoring goals as well. So. Got the last uh, winning goal at an away game against West Ham. Let's hope he can do it again in this game. So, And then you have got the likes of Betel come off the bench, Dan Juma, another centre midfielder, hopefully if Onan is fit. So let me know your thoughts in the comments anyway on this one. Let me know who you'd pick. Would you take out a Disagana gay and put Onana back? Would you take maybe James Garner off the team and put put Onana in let me know your thoughts in the comments who would you pick let me know make sure to give this video a like subscribe if you haven't already make sure to check out the match preview as well that is available to watch right now so go and check that out and if you want more videos daily live exclusives check out toffee tv premiere the link is in the description and the qr codes come on the screen in a sec see you later